let's talk about Nostra or yeah. Noster or however you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. N O S T R for those who are unfamiliar. Um, can you explain maybe at a high level what is Nostra? Yeah, so Nost I call it Nostra because I have an app Nostra. called Damas, right. so Nostra Damas. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so but some people call it Nostra. Um, yeah, so Nost Nostra was an attempt. It was written by uh, this guy named Fiat Jaff. He also obviously involved in the LN Ural spec. Um, so a lot of Bitcoiners just happen to be in the space just because you know Fiat Jaff made it. Um, but it's not a Bitcoin project. It's not a Lightning project. It's this distinct protocol, and it was designed. It was Fiat Jaff's attempt at making. Um, the simplest possible censorship resistant Twitter alternative that's like a global social network. Um, so there has been, there, there was attempts at, at this in the past. So one was called Mastodon, which uses the activity pro protocol. Um, and there's been other imp activity pub implementations. Uh, but that one, and I used it for a while. I used it for a couple of years. It's like, um, but it had a very big issue, which was when you join these uh, you had to join like a server and this server, you know, was your community, right? So you would join a server and then, oh, look, we have this decentral and this server could talk to other servers. And it was this federated model where you could send messages between servers. And it's like, this is great. We're decentralizing Twitter. Like, um, but it had a really bad issue where it just turned each of these communities turned into like dictatorships and they all hated each other. And if you said one wrong thing, the server admin would just ban you off the server. And then you'd have to like go through this awkward process of like, uh, moving all your followers to a new instance and hopefully you wouldn't get you wouldn't anchor that admin and he would ban you it's just it turned out to be like less censorship resistant than twitter which is like wow we really failed on this one guys if it's um so i think ultimately that model failed this this idea of a federated server model just for a censorship resistant global social network just didn't pl didn't play out so fiat jaff was like hey we could just make this way simpler instead of relying on um your identity being tied to these servers we'll just your t identity is just a, a private key it's actually the same type of key that's used in um taproot which is like these um schnorr keys um it's like 256 anyway uh, <laughs> so now you just have a key that's associated to your identity and then you can just publish me publish messages which are just json blobs and signed with your your key and then you can just send that to like maybe five or six or 10 relays or a hundred relays and that message and these relays are dumb. So they just accept messages of any kind signed by different people. And then you're not at risk of being banned from any individual server. Cause if, if one relay bans you, it doesn't matter because your messages are on six other relays and you can keep moving. And it's really easy to transfer your messages, but just by copying from one relay to another. So it's a really simple idea of just building this censorship resistant decentralized database in some sense. It's not even necessarily Twitter specific. That's just one use case, but people, I think one person built a chess engine on top of Nostra. Um, it's like a, anyway, so it's a lot of different use cases are built for like a uh, and, it, and I think the most important property is that it's not a blockchain. It's like this, this obsession of putting everything to blockchain is just ridiculous. So like we have a really efficient databases like Postgres and SQLite. Like why would, why does everything have to be into it, be in an immutable ledger? It just, it's just, it's just silly. So, uh, luckily, it doesn't have that infliction. Yeah. So this is an open database, though. And is it is it different from like databases you'd find on the web? <laughs> yeah. So databases you'd find on the web, typically you download a piece of software and you control the database, and and that's still true here, um, but usually they're very locked down. Like you can't. You, typically, web apps don't interact with databases directly because you can just like run a command that says delete all records, and now. You, you can hose anyone's database. So you need some type of interface to that database. So Nostra defines this very simple way of querying um, the database. And so you can say like, hey, give me all the posts from this user's pub key. Um, and then it'll stream it to you in real time. So it has this WebSocket component, which allows you to um, create chat rooms and things like that. So I can say, hey, subscribe to this chat room, and then it'll get all the messages of that chat room in, in real time. So it's like this real time database that has a, a well-defined interface for que querying and, and putting data into the database. Um, so where's the data living? Is it, is it in the, like, if I am running, uh, if I'm running Nostr and I have a, it, I, can I just run it on my phone on through, through Domus, the, uh, the client you built? Yeah. So the, so yeah, so Domus is a client that talks this protocol that knows how to talk to these databases. These, they're called relays. And, um, so the databases are the relays. Databases are the relays. So you don't have to run, you don't have to run a node, right? This is a, another a very important pr principle within Nostra is that to get in, to get, to get onboarded, you don't have to run anything. You just, um, you just say, Hey, I'm going to send all my messages to these 10 relays and new relays are popping up all the time. 
Um, so uh, it's very simple. Like if you actually download the if you go to domus.io and there's a link at the bottom, you can join the test flight. Um, and then to create an account, you don't even have to put your email address. You don't have to put in your phone number. You don't have to put anything. You just put you just set any username you want, and then it'll give you a key, and then boom, you're in. You're into the system, which is it should be that easy, right? Got it. And so then you're blasting out all your messages to all these relays. Yeah. And because you're sending them out to so many, these relays are all, you can effectively guarantee that you're not going to get shut out of the entire system. Is that right? Exactly. Um, so there is, there, there, there are some um, downsides to this approach. Um, so your friends have to be using the same set of relays or else you won't get their messages. So it's not like a peer to peer mm. network where all these messages are getting broadcast to all the nodes, um, which actually makes it a bit more flexible. Um, so a couple of use cases I was thinking of is imagine if you're running a relay for your own company um, that is just like maybe even firewalled, but it only works within your um, your organization. You can actually be sending messages. Everyone within your company could be sending messages to that relay and then your client connects to that relay, but only your client can see those messages because you're authenticated with that or you're on a VPN that can only see that. Um, and I actually do that. I actually run a private Nostra relay on my WireGuard VPN at home. And so whenever I get paid, um, when my Lightning node receives a payment or my Bitcoin node receives a payment, I actually send a Nostra event to my private relay that my app connects to. So I can actually get these like real-time notifications of, of payments and stuff to Domus, which is which is completely private to me. So there's a lot of cool like use cases like that. Which, uh, yeah. Now, what's the incentive for someone to run a public relay? Because this, be this would be a pretty large database, right? Like it would take up quite a few like big resource uh, requirement. Yeah, so I mean, because I, so I, my, I'm actually running a relay, like the Domus relay right now, and my goal is that I'm just going to store everything no matter how spammy it is. So it's probably going to be pretty large scale. But to be honest, these are just small JSON blobs. In terms of like data scale nowadays, like it's not hard to just put that into a database on Amazon somewhere and just store everything. Um, so yeah, it is. The, like, but why would I do that as a, as, as a Domus, you know, uh, relay? Um, well, first of all, I want this. I want this to succeed. I think it's a really cool cool idea. So it's almost like that's one a good enough reason for me, but there are some relays that if they don't, um, if if if, you're, if if it comes to a point where the spam is so bad, what relays can do is like, hey, if you want to send a message to my relay, you have to pay this lightning invoice maybe once a month. Um, so Fiat Jaff actually has an example of this. Um, it's called the expensive dash relay dot Fiat Jaff, I think, and then you can it'll give you a lightning invoice and you give it a pub key and you pay that, and then now you have permission to send to that relay. So you can actually st make, um, and then if you're, if you're spam conscious, maybe you only want to connect to those relays that are paid for. Um, so that, that's one example of, um, so yeah, so, so spam is an issue on the network and there are a bunch of different approaches that we're, that we're looking at right now, which is like proof of work, which I'm not sure if it'll work. Um, these paid relay options. Um, I have a few ideas on how to even just um, have these like an orange check idea. So Michael Saylor had this idea on, on Twitter Whereas you buy an orange check and then even if there are people who are buying orange checks and spamming you, you can eventually block them over time. Um, so maybe, um, you know, you pay Domus, the Domus relay, and they'll give you an orange check, which is again, just a, a Nostra message. And then clients can download those orange checks and then use that for spam protection. So that's another way of monetizing, which I'm, I'm looking at, but yeah, there's a lot of different approaches.